from this end uh, to assist you and support you in this process and uh, obviously answer any questions that you've got about the framework and how it works. Just as a background, and I'm sure Phil's mentioned this, I um, Phil made contact with me after reading my book. Um, he liked the idea. I believe he's spoken internally to you. And uh, most people have thought, well, great idea. We'll give it a go um, in lieu of a normal performance review system, um, which you can take by the title of my book as I'm dead set against because I don't think it does any any good at all. In fact, uh, I've seen no research anywhere in the world that demonstrates that performance reviews are actually effective. So, um, so it was on that basis that I came up with the five conversations framework. And uh, so, so that's pretty much the overview. And so what I, what I essentially want to do during this session is three things. Talk about the challenges and opportunities for your industry. Now, obviously, I'm not an expert in your industry, but I did a little bit of homework. Um, and, and it seems to me that your industry is as much about people as it is about anything else. And I think a lot of people um, in industry, in lots of industries, don't see it that way. I want to talk about the framework, of course, and I want to talk about your role and not to underestimate your role in this. Now, I did, I, tell, I told Phil a story uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is a true story, where I was asked to give a presentation here in Australia to some general practitioners. And essentially, the presentation was on communication skills. And I thought I was going to come in for a pretty tough time because a lot of the general practitioners were pretty cynical about the idea of this person coming in who had no medical background at all to give them a presentation on, uh, I guess, bedside manner. And uh, so I thought, well, the best way I could go with that is to go out and do a little bit of my own research and go and talk to some patients. And I actually talked to uh, a number of patients and I asked them a very, very simple question. I mean, we're all patients at some point. So I asked a simple question. I said, On a, uh, do you take your medication as prescribed by your general practitioner, which is essentially a yes or no. That's all I was after. Um, and what startled me initially was that I had a 30%, 30 percent of people, say three out of 10, said to me that they don't always strictly take their medication as prescribed by, a G, by their GP. And of course, my follow-up question to those 30 percent was why? And the common theme that was coming through that was, the common theme was that my GP is a script provider, or he or she has absolutely no interest whatsoever in my well-being. And uh, so there was a correlation between bedside manner and the ability of that general practitioner to influence people because essentially that's what they're there for. <clears throat> they can give the right information, but whether or not uh, people are actually influenced or not by that information will very much depend on the working uh, relationship that the patient has with the GP. So I was using that as a basis to go in and talk to this uh, rather sceptical crowd. So um, I think when people come into your pharmacies, it's probably not dissimilar, I would imagine. And I think you've probably got situations where uh, if they feel that there's a genuine uh, desire to assist, uh, a genuine interest in their well welfare, then they're perhaps re ready to listen to you. So I'm not sure that it's much different. And so what the five conversations is about is actually about leadership building a similar kind of working relationship with the people that work with you. Essentially, that's what it's all about. So um, your role in this is very important, I might say. So I just wanted to, this slide will come up on your screen shortly. There we are. There we go. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of observations from my naive perspective about your industry. And, you know, I'd be more than happy for you to tell me whether I'm missing the mark on this. So obviously your industry is going through enormous change. And, you know, it's no different to any other industry. I work across 21 industries. And what's interesting is that there isn't an industry that I work in that isn't under enormous 
transformations, perhaps that's a better word, over the last decade. And so you've got, you know, technological advances and, and new business models and all the rest. So clearly your industry is under a significant transformation. So to counter that, uh, you know, to counter those changes, one of the ways forward is to equip your workforce with the necessary skill set, the flexibility and responsiveness to, to be able to evolve, to, you know, in that evolving landscape. So essentially it's about giving people um, the right skill sets, challenging their thinking and so forth. Now, if that's done, the answer to shaping the next generation of leaders is to drive uh, employee engagement. And I know that word's being used a lot, but at the end of the day, if you listen to exit interviews, and exit interviews are interviews where people leave, they've already made the decision to leave, and the HR manager sits down and says, why are you leaving? And the, the majority reason when it's all said and done is because they don't have a good working relationship with their manager. Of course, that's not the official reason that they give. It's often that they have a better opportunity down the road or, um, you know, uh, it's time for a career change or something. So they give the politically correct answer. But when, when the HR person sits down and asks them, that's often the reason. So engagement and, um, you know, engagement and uh, the uh, ability to have a good working relationship with your team is absolutely critical. So employee engagement and talent, talent management strategies enable you or, or in some senses insulate you the f for the future. So the relationship between you and your team members is absolutely critical. So this is the rationale for the five conversations. So it's about building an even more effective working relationship with the people that you work with. So um, any of you got any comment or question about that or am I off the off the off on a wrong tangent or what what's your view of that? I just, I just wanted to see I agree with us. Okay. No, just 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 go for your life. I just yeah, did you say you agreed with it? agree with that? Yes. Okay. Agree. All right, I'm getting a lot of static, um, still no audio. Okay, um, I'm just going to have to keep ploughing on. Obviously, some people, yeah, suggest, okay. Thanks, Phil. Look, type, type in your responses. I think that might be the best way forward because obviously I'm hearing a lot of static and I'm not sure I'm coming through loud and clear either at this end. So if you've got a comment to make, type it in. I think that might be the best way because we've got about 12 people. Uh, I'll, I'll mute the mics now as well, and that might make life a little bit easier. Um, let's see if that works. Okay. Okay. Right, I don't know whether that makes it clearer, but anyway, I was just going to say that it might be a good idea if we just, if you just type in your responses, because otherwise um, we won't know who's talking at once. We've got a bit too many in the room, in the room to be able to. Okay, still no audio. Okay, I agree. Thanks, Helen. I appreciate that comment. Um, still no audio. Um, yeah, that's a bit. I, so it make. I'm assuming that you're not all in the one room. That would probably be. Yeah, I mean, these things, unfortunately, there's not much I can do except plough on, and there's a, quite a few of you that can hear me. Aha, uh -huh. Phil, don't worry about it. We'll uh, look look into it uh, for next time. Yep, okay. All right, look, moving right along. 
Um, there's something else that I want to share with you in relation to before I launch into the five conversations framework. I just want to talk about what probably is a fairly provocative statement here. And I'm saying here that the roles that people play in organisations are more important than the jobs that they do. So what I, I guess I'm alluding to here is that there are two types of work that people do for you and me. So what I want to do is just map out how that looks. So if you look at the work that people do, on the one hand, there is a job role that people have, which essentially is the technical aspects of what they do. And so that's the technical skills. Now, most of that's covered in a, in a job description. And uh, we recruit people on that basis. We promote people on that basis. We reward people on that basis. We assess performance on that basis. But I want to challenge you uh, to just think about this as well in another way, that people actually have non-job roles. And what I'm arguing here is that non-job roles are just as, if not in more important. So one of the reasons that the five conversations is so effective um, is that the it does impinge on the non-job roles. Now, there's been a lot of talk about how many of these are there and so forth. Um, and people have often had trouble coming to a conclusion about what they are. Well, I think there are four. And I just want to share with you what those four are. Um, one of those non-job roles that I think is critically important um, is having a positive attitude and enthusiasm. Now, um, obviously, it's not about people coming to work and bouncing off the walls, but essentially it's about people who aren't negative, who aren't undermining, who aren't um, pointing the finger of blame and so forth and so on. So uh, that is a non-job role that's critically important. Just think for a moment, uh, if you're an area manager and uh, you have a number of people in your pharmacies who have negative attitudes and just think what that does to the whole business. So obviously it's important. And as I say, it's not about being bouncing off the walls and being positive all the time. It's just not being negative all the time is critically important. Another job role that we expect people to play, and this is particularly relevant, I'm sure, in the pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical industry, particularly in the retail outlets, is that we want people to play a team role. In other words, we want people to be able to work in a team environment, because obviously that would be counterproductive if you had somebody that didn't want to do that. So that becomes an important uh, issue. Um, the, we also want people to continually upgrade their skill development. So we want people to actually continuously learn. And you often hear people say, oh, look, I'm too old to learn, or I don't want to learn that new system, or I'm quite happy with the way we've done things for years and years and years. Well, obviously, that's going to be counterproductive, not just to the pharmacy, but also to uh, to their own career. So that's a non-job role. And the fourth one there is the um, innovation and continuous improvement role. We want actually want people to come to work with their thoughts, their ideas, and so forth, and be able to share those. Um, obviously, there'd be a, some uniformity around what Lindsay and Gilmore do, um, because you know, that's the way it's branded. But we still want people to come to work and come come to work with their suggestions and their thoughts and their ideas. So what the not what the five conversations actually does is build on those non-job roles uh, because they're critically important to your success in business. And so I just wanted to make that point before I went too far and talked about the five conversations framework. And if you doubt that for a minute, just have a look at this slide, which is showing the research around uh, this, this. This was there were 9,000 people involved in this, so it's a pretty significant sample. It was done across three decades. It wasn't done too long ago, 2014. And people, these were managers, were simply asked uh, a question: If there was one 
job attribute that was critically important in an employee, what would it be? Simple question. And what you're seeing on your screen is the top 10. So what's interesting, and of course the one that's top there, enthusiasm, positive attitude, had the most, the highest rate a rating, so this was a frequency survey. So basically what it was saying, and if you look, cast your eyes down those 10 things, there's nothing in there that's technically based. So I'm just trying to make the point that the non-job roles that people play are highly valued, apart from being important. So this is what managers across a number of industries, a range of industries and uh, cultures have said that they believe to be critically important. So I just wanted to make that point before we, we launch into too far. So if you've got any comments or questions, uh, by all means, type them in because uh, happy to uh, respond to any of that before we move on. Okay. Now, what you're seeing in front of you, or you'll see very shortly when it comes up on your screen, is now you're seeing the framework, and I know you've seen this before. Uh, Phil has uh, sent you a, uh, an outline of what the five conversations looks like. Now, I just want to explain a little bit about this, and then you may be aware that I'll be running a 30-minute uh, webinar at the, uh, to bookend each of these five conversations. So uh, very shortly, uh, I'll be running a, a climate review webinar, and that will be accessible to anybody who's in your business. And basically what I'll be running through in more detail about that particular conversation so that when people go out and have that conversation, they know how to prepare, they know what questions they're going to be asked, they've thought about the answers and they've got something to contribute. And likewise, as a manager, it gives you an opportunity as well. So. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why we have these five conversations. Why don't we have another conversation? Yep, the first one is on Tuesday. Thanks, Phil. Um, why do we have these five? Well, uh, let me give you a little bit of the background so it gives you a bit of an understanding. The climate review really is just looking at people's job satisfaction, their morale and their communication. It's an easy conversation to get into. Uh, it's fairly non-threatening. But how many times have you actually asked somebody, you know, how they'd rate their job satisfaction? Probably not very often, if at all. So the very first question there is, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10's high, 1's low, how would you rate your current job satisfaction? Now, the answer that you get is not so much as so important as the next question, which is why. So it's opening a door to actually have a listen to what people are saying. I'd be surprised if you got any 10 out of 10s, but if you did, that's great, and I'd be a bit concerned if you got ones at one out of 10, but you're probably likely to get, you know, you might get someone give you, giving you a six out of 10. So it's a simple case of saying why, so it gives you a bit of a handle on where they're at with their job satisfaction at that point, because that opens up a possibility there might be something that you can do that might assist them to develop more job satisfaction. We're talking about morale, and this is particularly relevant uh, in, in the retail setting. And we're also talking about communication between perhaps one pharmacy and another, or one pharmacy and, say, head office. So, <clears throat> so the first conversation is a fairly straightforward, easy conversation. I should say to you that it probably will take you more than 20 minutes. And uh, that's not a great concern, and, and I wouldn't be too worried about that. I mean, sometimes it's a good thing that it does go longer than 20 minutes because there's things that need to be talked about, and this is your opportunity. Um, but they have been designed to be short, and, that, and you'll find some of them will be shorter than others. But you might find the first one because it's the first one might take a bit longer. In month two, we talk about strengths and talents, and the whole purpose of that is to start with what people what people are naturally good at. Because normally with these things, we start with what people are not good at. And then of course, it creates this downward spiral of negativity. So the question then is, you know, and we're expecting people to come to these conversations having thought about this. So instead of you launching into, I think this is your strength, you're actually asking them, 
what they enjoy doing. And there's a high correlation between what people enjoy doing and what they're good at. We, we, we know that. So instead of just going straight for what is your strengths, and some people will find that very hard to answer, a far simpler question to start that conversation is what do you enjoy doing? And then from there you can leverage off that and talk about people's strengths. So this gives us some uh, capacity to be able to to draw upon people's knowledge and perhaps their skill sets in certain situations in the pharmacy. In month three, we're then talking about opportunities for growth. And this is essentially about um, you know the things that people have to work on. Now, that's probably the most challenging of the five conversations. So therefore, it's going to be uh, possibly difficult, but the point that about this is that, again, the team member comes to that conversation having already thought about their opportunities for improvement, all right? So it's not about you assessing them, it's about them coming to that meeting uh, having thought about that. Then if you think about it, we've had two conversations around strengths and opportunities for growth. The fourth conversation is around learning and development. So it's highly likely that there'll be some growth opportunities and some learning opportunities that'll come out of those two conversations. Now that's not necessarily sending someone off to a course or something. It might just be that you need to explain something more clearly to someone. There needs to be some mentoring or some coaching or something going on that might help that person uh, equip them better in their non-job and job roles, okay? And then the final conversation, and this is one of those non-job roles that I talked about, was the innovation and continuous improvement. And that's kind of exciting because if you think about, imagine all the pharmacies in, in your organisation during the month of whatever month it might be, and then remember we're doing this over two months, so you'll have two months to do this, but imagine during that two months that we're having conversations around innovation and continuous improvement. That will be a good thing. And uh, there will be some good ideas that'll come out of that. Not everyone's idea will be great, but most people understand that, uh, you know, my idea mightn't get up, but uh, at least I'm being listened to. So even if you've got a handful of good ideas there that were easy to implement, fairly cost effective, and, uh, you know, had a high leverage, well then the business is going to be better off. So that's essentially how the framework works. And um, so with the whole idea is that you'll have two months to do each of those conversations. So we're talking about a 10 month cycle to get through one round of the five conversations. So that's not onerous. It's, uh, and, and I strongly recommend, strongly recommend that you uh, take time out um, 10, 15 minutes, go and have a cup of coffee or whatever and get away from the business while you're having this conversation. So you'll need to have to plan ahead for that and because you know, you'll know you find that people are far more relaxed, far more open, far more genuine, authentic, whatever word you want to use if they're away from the business. And of course, so will you um, because you're not always looking over your shoulder at the same, at the, at the same time. So that's the framework. Did any of you have any questions at this stage about those five uh, conversations? Of course, I'll be going into more detail starting next Tuesday with the climate review. So um, any questions, comments, observations about any of those five? No? Okay. All right. So um, that's good to hear, I, I guess, if I can say that. Um, now, I did want to touch on your role. Yeah, yes, Phil. Yeah, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Yep. No. Okay. Um, look, your role, and look, I'm making an assumption here that you're uh, the leader's in the organisation, and I'm not sure that I'm right on that assumption. Uh, dual roles for some, okay, so there's some of you who uh, perhaps will be on the receiving end of conversations, there'll be others of you who will be actually running conversations. Uh, there'll be both leaders and employees. Now, I did want to talk about this 
um, because I, 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 you know, so there are some senior leaders I'm sure in here, and I want to talk about your role in this, and uh, I'll draw upon those people that are employees as well as we go through. Please make the conversations a priority. Uh, what you will find is that busyness will get in the way. And uh, I'm not sure whether you, the pharmaceutical industry is cyclical. Uh, I suppose you'd be busy all year round, but I do want you to make this a priority. So why do we want you to make it a priority? Because obviously, if busyness just gets in the way, it sounds like a fantastic idea, but uh, you know, we, we just haven't had time to have a conversation. I can tell you that. Um, this will make a huge difference to the business uh, if people make it a priority. So it's critically important that that happen. And for those of you who might be on the receiving end of these conversations, then be proactive about it and go up to your boss and say, look, I'd like to have my conversation. Um, don't wait for them to come to you necessarily, although that would probably be a good idea. But if you're, if you're, you can see that your boss is very busy, then um, basically let them know uh, that you're ready for your conversation. See this as an opportunity to learn a new skill set because it is. Um, you're learning some new skills here and uh, those of you who are technically trained, which I'd imagine there'd be quite a few of you, this is a whole new skill set and it's a skill set not just in dealing with uh, uh, customers as they come through the door, but this is to deal with your team members at a at a deeper level, and uh, it's still a professional working relationship, but it is at a deeper level, and that's why we're going through a process like this. So you'll learn some skills about yourself. You'll you'll um, you'll you know you'll learn how to ask you know if you don't already if you don't already feel comfortable doing it, you'll certainly feel comfortable asking questions. To, to paraphrase, to uh, perhaps have a little bit more empathy with where people are at in your arrangement. So that that is important to understand that this is an opportunity for you. And of course, if you're on the receiving end, it also means that you're learning some skills too. And it's, and it's probably likely that you'll gain a better insight into who your boss is at the time. So, I'd also suggest to you to tune in to the support webinars. I know we've had a bit of an issue this, this, uh, this morning in relation to um, you know, connectivity and so forth, and I think there's still some that don't have sound, but nevertheless, um, we'll see what we can do about that, if anything. But the point is, come to those support webinars. They will be made available to you. Uh, after, so obviously if you can't see them at the time, and we'll try and make them about mid-morning for you. Um, if you can't, then you'll have the um, you'll have the audio to listen to or the recording on YouTube, and you'll also have the slides as well. So uh, important that you ask questions, don't just talk, um, because I think this is not about an appraisal. This is about a conversation, and a conversation implies two people. Um, uh, talking to each other without any particular uh, status in that situation. Ultimately, it'll improve, it'll improve business, it'll improve uh, communication right across business, as Phil has just pointed out. Actively listen, and I guess the important part of these conversations is to actually listen carefully to the other person and what they've got to say. So these are skills that you develop, of course, um, that make a huge difference. And of course, if you're on the receiving end, the critical thing for you is to uh, to also practice some of these listening skills as well. Um, and remember that you, you, you know, at the end of the day, you are a people business. Now, I think that, that sometimes uh, people don't get that. But look, at the end of the day, if you took everybody out of the pharmacies, you just had product on the shelves, and you had um, medicines and all sorts of things, uh, it's, it's not going to work particularly well. Um, and uh, it's the people dimension that makes all the difference. And I think sometimes we've got to remember that. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing this. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I'm not suggesting that we do this in a warm and fuzzy 
it's not that warm and fuzzy, it's really just about connecting with the most important resource in your business, which is ultimately the people, which is ultimately interface with the public when they come into the pharmacies. That's the first person they meet will have a big bearing on uh, whether or not that person is willing to listen, let alone purchase uh, purchase something in the, in that store. So um, the role, your role is important in the process, very important. So I just wanted to um, sum up, because I realise you're all busy, and I just wanted to make the point that there are a number of benefits in this process for you. The first benefit is it's creating an ongoing dialogue that perhaps wouldn't normally happen. So yes, we're putting a framework in place, but the framework is there to develop a dialogue which is ongoing between, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one dialogue between the manager and his or her team. And that's important, otherwise busyness, as I said before, gets in the way. We, the five conversations framework is, will, will be, is more open and more direct, so you can be open and direct. Open in the sense that we're covering some areas that were, perhaps we wouldn't have covered before, and direct in the sense that people know what they're going to be asked, so there's no mystery, and it's a question of coming to those meetings prepared. So those of you who um, will be on the receiving end of conversations, the very best advice I can give you is come to the meeting ready, having thought carefully about the questions so that you can have a rich dialogue when you meet, of course. A third benefit of all of this is it's flexible. And it's flexible in the sense that these conversations can occur um, during, you know, morning, afternoon, even evening, uh, you you uh, you can work out when is the best time to do these. They don't have to be done in the store. In fact, I strongly recommend they they're not done in the store. And the idea is to uh, it, there's a lot of flexibility to this, which makes a lot of uh, a lot of sense. No need to take copious notes or anything like that. It's just a matter of having a good conversation on these topics with these questions. Um, and of course, what it does is it gives you timely information, and that, that's important because at the time, if you're hearing, say you're, uh, you're, in a, um, you're in a pharmacy and you're hearing the same message from five different people, then it probably suggests that something needs to change or perhaps something's going very well. So it's timely and it can give you a chance to orientate and change your approach as such. And finally, I can assure you it's much more relaxing than the good old performance review where we sit there and go through mindless paperwork and, uh, and, and, and often don't make eye contact and just go through a, a process of filling out forms. It's not a particularly good way to go. So there are lots and lots of, uh, it's a lot more relaxing and what you will find after the second conversation is that people start to get relaxed and into it. So um, that's pretty much it from me as an overview. Um, Phil or anybody else, more than happy to answer your questions now. So if you wanted to type in any questions, go for your life. Um, happy to try to respond to those. No questions from you, Phil, fine. Anyone else? All right, well I hope that's just not I hope that doesn't mean that it's just Phil and I having a conversation between us. I, um, I just uh, I hope that all made sense that I'm coming across clearly. Um, always difficult to know on this receiving end, but uh, 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 here we go. Uh, Angus, uh, no, but looking forward to engaging more fully with the staff. Yeah, thanks Angus. I, look, that's the right attitude. I think, you know, at the end of the day, we're not asking anybody to do anything onerous. It's really something we all should be doing anyway, but the only reason that we don't always do this is, of course, busyness is just, uh, we've got an avalanche of busyness and we just forget that the, the, the human dimension. So that's the right attitude to have, is to say, right, oh, well, we're going we're gonna to give this a crack and you'll find that it actually is ends up being quite enjoyable. Okay, uh, thanks Helen, it was very interesting, happy to hear that comment. 
Anybody else before we sign off? All right. Well, thanks, folks. Um, I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday if you're going to be on board for that uh, climate review um, webinar. And I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you, uh, I guess, indirectly. Uh, I wish you all the very best. And uh, yeah, just get into it and enjoy it. And uh, realize that it's something that's uh, going to make a critical difference to communicate communication across the business and also communication within the business and the business units. So thank you, Phil, for the opportunity. And I wish you all the very best. And uh, uh, it's actually a good night from me, but it's a morning for you. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, guys, and all the very best. Thank you, and goodbye.